All right, so for this week's assignment, we are going to modify the InShot Part 3. So you should have InShot Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, and now we're going to have Part 4. All right, so all you're going to do on this one is open up Part 3, save it as a new copy. So you're just going to go up here, you know, you're just going to have Part 3 open, file, save as, save it as in shop part four. All right, so I've already done that right here. So I'm going to close out three. Now I have four open, okay? Now, what we're gonna do this week is we are going to do a little bit of work on this side, all right? So we're gonna take this block, we're gonna stand it up. The notch is gonna be off to the right, all right, with this tapered side that you 3D milled um, facing to your right. All right, so uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called, um, well, we're gonna use a strategy called trace, but we need to get something to engrave on here first, all right? Um, so let me get out of this. Let me get back over here to design. And we're gonna open up a sketch right here. Okay, now I'm gonna want this facing me like that. Right, so I'm gonna want my text right here. So I wanna face the part like that. I'm gonna go up here and pick text. Okay, now here's where you're gonna draw the box where you want your text to be. Now we can go back and manipulate this a little bit, um, but you wanna put it in the, the general area of where you want it, all right? And all I'm gonna do is type my name, okay? All right, I'm gonna change that size to, let's see what 0.25 looks like, okay? going to align center and you can do this however you want to do it all right you can use whatever kind of font you want so let's see here let's just pick this one or whatever doesn't I, I don't I don't care which one you pick um, but I will I think this one's pretty yeah all right I think that one's pretty cool so let's um you know, one thing you do want to look out for is this is an engravable text. All right, let me try to find one that is not. It's easiest to show you what we're not looking for. Some of these uh, crazier ones, I think they get a little bit crazier. Thought they did. All right, so this one. Uh, yes, you can still engrave it, but it's going to be a little bit tougher. Um, you know, you, it, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to, uh, to pick up the lines and things when they're, when they're self-intersecting. Um, so, you know, for, for this assignment, let's just, uh, let's just keep it with something simple. Um, let's impact, all right? I'm, I'm just going to go with impact to keep it simple. All right, now once you get your font picked out, that's when you can go in and really fine tune uh, what size you want it to be, all that sort of stuff, okay? All right, now I'm gonna click okay there. I'm gonna come in here and see if I can manipulate this a little bit. So you can move it around, you can twist it, you can contort it however you want to. So mine is looking, so mine is still on an angle, see that? I'll make that horizontal to where now, just something like that. All right, now I'm gonna actually go in here and all I'm doing is just double clicking the text and I'm going to change this to, let's just say 0.3125. All right, so manipulate that however you want to manipulate it. All right, get it, get it looking however you want it to look. And you can constrain this with sketches. 
you can go in and, and you know, say that you want to stay between, you know, certain areas and follow lines and everything else. But from what I've seen, it's easiest to just kind of eyeball it and manipulate it around. All right. Now, once you get that done, you're going to go, well, I just clicked finish sketch. We didn't have to finish sketch, but I'm going to go back and edit that sketch. And then I'm simply going to click E for extrude. And select inside of that text. Give me one second. One second. Okay, I just ran into a little bit of an issue, but let me explain what happened. I'm going to cancel out of that. And when I clicked E, it automatically pre-selected that upper profile. So it automatically selected that. That's not what I want to cut. So I need to get rid of that. And click just my engraving. And I'm going to go down about five thousandths. Make sure your operation is uncut. And okay. So now I have my engraving. Now we're not going to go in here when we cut this, we're not going to like mill out this as a pocket. Okay. You know, first off, you would need an excruciatingly small end mill and, um, and we're not going to do all that. We're basically going to take a ball mill and we're going to trace these lines. All right, no, uh, no big deal there. All right, uh, the next thing I want to do is put a chamfer on here. Okay, so all I did was went up here, modify, and you don't want to be in a sketch for this. You want to be just on, on your normal solid tab. You don't want to be in a sketch. Modify, chamfer, and we're going to select this entire top surface here. All right, now, if, uh, if, you, if you were lucky when you clicked this, it, it automatically kind of, you know, grabbed everything. All right, if, if that doesn't happen, you can just go around and just kind of manually click each line that you want inside, um, that you want to be chamfered. And we're going to give this a 50 thousandths chamfer. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, looks pretty good. And okay. All right, so now from there, and this, this video is gonna be pretty short, so I'm gonna go ahead and combine both CAD and CAM in this same video, um, you know, just to, to keep it simple. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Then we're going to walk over here to manufacture. We're going to have a new setup. So I'm going to right click, new setup. All right, I'm going to go right over here and I'm going to say no additional stock. Go back to setup and we will go select Z and X. So our Z is going to be running this way, our X going to be running this way and we want to go model box point here flip that Z running up okay so uh, same same process as we always do all right um, now let me explain why selecting center is not a good idea here all right no it, it looks great on the screen Right, you know, just pick up center, everything's great. But you would be able to touch off here and here pretty easily. So front side, back side, and find the middle. And then you would be able to touch off on this side, but not this side. Do you see? So you're not going to be able to get an edge finder down there and touch off on that corner. And even if you were, that corner is not going to come to a perfect point like you think it would. All right, because you're going to file it. You're going to you're going to knock that corner off a little bit, and it's going to throw your dimensions off. So for this one, I would recommend we go with a 
uh, let's see, we'll still go model box point. Let's just pick this back left, just like that, to where when you're when you're when you set your part in there in this orientation, you're going to touch off on that back corner and the top of your part. Okay. And again, we've already done stock. All that looks good. And again, let me let me kind of rehash something. Um, I've got my block drawn as one inch. I don't know what your block is. If your block is one inch, that's great. If it's not, then you need to change that. You need to go back to your model and change that. Um, but mine is, so we're just going to roll with this. All right, so I'm going to change this to in shop part four. I'm going to change the, the program number to 0305, whatever. Okay. And actually, let me uh, let me go back and change one quick thing. Let's go edit. I'm gonna put my name in here. In shop part four. Josh McDowell. All right. So you would put in shop part four, uh, whatever your name is. And okay. I'm going to change the name of this setup to InShop Part 4, Josh McDowell. Okay. Now, from here, I'm going to right-click, New Operation, 2D Milling, and we're going to do Trace. Now, a lot of people want to use Engrave here, um, and, and that that's Engrave has its place, but it's not going to do like, like we typically want it to do on a CNC machine. Um, so the engraving feature is mainly for um, like V-type cutters where you want to taper out of a letter um, so that it can actually taper the form of the letter in and out. Um, we, we don't necessarily want that. We just want trace, okay? No, if you want to, if you want to, you know, tinker around with engraving, then, then I would encourage you to do that, but, but we're going to use trace. Okay. And I'm going to create a new tool. And that new tool is going to be a ball and mill. And it's going to be an eighth inch ball nose. Going to be a three flute. The diameter is obviously 0.125. Flute length is going to be 0.375. And you can leave everything else the same for now. If you want to change this to carbide, feel free. And obviously, the eighth inch ball mills that we'll be using will be carbide. And there'll be three flute. All right. We want to spin this at 10,000 RPM. As fast as those super mini mills will go. And our cutting feed rate, I would say that we need to cut this about a half a thou. I'm sorry, a half a thou per flute. And our vertical feed rates, I would do the same. Okay, so when it's plunging, all right, it, it, we wanted to go five thou, five tenths, I'm sorry, five tenths per revolution. All right, so it's going to be um, significantly slower right, where it's plunging down into material. All right, and then we're going to have an eighth inch ball nose. And accept and select now we're gonna jump over here to geometry we're gonna come down here and select our top huh I'm 
Hold on one second. I have an issue here. Okay, so th it was uh, it was acting kind of kind of odd. Um, you know, a lot of times when you have a closed sketch like this, when you come in, it'll uh, it'll try to select only one. You know, instead of the entire sketch, I guess would would be would be safe to say instead of the same profile, the entire profile rather. Um, but I want to select the entire thing. I don't want to have to sit here and click each and every individual one of those lines. Um, so you, you've got a couple of different things you can do. You can, uh, you got curve selections, uh, to where you can, you can change what you select. And you've also, uh, let's see here. I just got out of the entire thing. All right, so let's just jump right into it. So when you when you come in, see certain areas, it only wants to pick that line, but then other areas, it wants to grab the entire curve. All right, now, what I'm gonna tell you is to grab the top. So let's find out where it wants to, there we go. So grab the top of it. All right, do not grab the bottom. And what I mean by that is do not grab this line here. Okay. So only grab the top. And I will explain that here in a second when we get to that screen. And go to height. All that should be good. Passes. Um, all right. So for passes, you have this uh, sideways compensation. So you've got left, right, or center. And basically, what that's going to do is it's going to offset the tool to a certain side of this line. Okay. So if we select left, it's going to offset this tool to the left of that path. If we select right, it's gonna offset it to the right of that path. We want center. We wanna drive the center line of the cutter on this line, okay? Um, now you've got this axial offset. So axial is gonna be dealing with the Z axis, all right? So you've got axial and radial. Axial is gonna be in the Z axis, radial is gonna be in the X and Y, all right? So if I want to offset this curve down this is what i would use so i would go you know three thousand well i would go negative point three thousand or negative three thousandths to set my engraving to three thousandths now if you remember when we did this sketch we extruded down i think it was three thousandths is what we did we either did three or five something like that all right um but if I selected the bottom, that's where it would put it to, whatever we set it at in the model. And then if you wanted to offset it more, either, either positively or negatively, you could do it here. What I have found is the easiest in practice is just to select the top. And then I don't have to do any math or any, I don't have to do any remembering, how deep did I set it, any of that. I just say, I want it 3,000 deep. Key it in right there and you're done. That's the only screen you need to look at, okay? And then all this right here is automatically good, just right off the get-go. So if we look right here, that blue line is where our tool is, is going down into our work. So I'm gonna go right here, edit. And if you look, let me cancel that, if you look, it went about two thirds of the way down. So evidently when we drew this model, we did drop it down five thousandths. So if I go in here and edit, go right here, 
right here to negative five thousandths. Now it's going all the way deep, all the way down. So I don't I don't have to do any sort of tweaking or changing or anything else. All I've, I've just got to, this is where I set my depth. All right, if I was you guys, I would set it at negative three thousandths. All right, with an eighth inch ball mill, uh, three thousandths depth just seems to do really, really well. Okay, now, got that done. So now all we've got left to do is a chamfer. And we're going to do a chamfer using a contour. All right, we do not have a chamfer mill. Yep, so let's go ahead and make that one. It's gonna be a chamfer mill. It's gonna be a 250 drill mill. It's the same ones that we use a whole lot in the shop, uh, quarter inch drill mills, uh, carbide two flute. All right, so these are two flute carbide. 0.25. All right, now the tip diameter. So if you look at this image right here, that's what it's asking. So if that was zero, then our tool would come to a very, very fine point. All right, but our drill mills do not come to a perfectly fine point. They come to a 20 thousandths flat. So you definitely, definitely need to, need to put that in there because if you leave that at zero, uh, it's, it's going to uh, screw up all your numbers, all right? So you need to set that to 020. And if you want to take a drill mill and go up and set it on the optical comparator or something, then you can always do that and you can really, really see that 20 thousandths flat. Uh, it really, really pops out to you, okay? All right, and then all this stuff should be good. I'm gonna spin this at 10,000 RPM as well. And 40 inches a minute is fine for this. We're not gonna be doing anything crazy with it, so 40 inches should be just fine. Quarter inch drill mill is my comment. And then select, we're good. Now we're gonna select our contour. Now, when you're selecting chamfers as a contour, if they're already drawn in, then it makes your life a lot easier. All right, if they're not drawn in, then it's still not difficult to do, but it, it just takes a, a, a little bit of thought. But if your chamfer is already drawn in, then you select the bottom, okay? Make sure that your arrow is pointing the right way. All right, so we're on the outside, that's good. We're gonna go to heights. We don't have to change anything on heights. Now on passes. So on passes, we're gonna do a repeat finish pass. I'm sorry, we're gonna do multiple finish passes. So we're gonna do three finish passes with a 10,000 step over. All right, and then we'll go ahead and do a repeat finish pass as well. So it's going to take a pass 20 thousandths off. So it's going to take one pass at 20 thousandths off, one pass at 10 thousandths off, one pass at zero. And then once it gets to zero, it's going to run it twice. So these are essentially roughing passes. And then we're going to, once we get to net, we're gonna take a flex pass. We're gonna do a little bit of finish overlap here. And when in doubt, just hover over that box and it'll explain to you what it's doing. Very, very intuitive. All right, now for our chamfer. Now, for the chamfer, if, I did not have a chamfer drawn in. So if this part just 
had a straight 90 degree corner, this is where you would type in what size chamfer you wanted. So if there wasn't, if there wasn't a corner there, I'm sorry, if there wasn't a chamfer there and it was just a hard 90 corner, then this is where you would type in the width of chamfer that you wanted, okay? Um, but we already have it drawn in. So we have to put something here. I, it will not accept zero, okay? Uh, not, not that I've seen. All right, we'll, we'll try it here in a second, but I don't think it'll accept zero. All right, but chamfer tip offset. This is a, a, an awesome explanation right here. It's basically asking you how much do you want to set off of the part. All right, so me as a rule, general rule of thumb, I do 50 thousandths. And then I'm going to come right over here. And there's a little tab right here that says entry positions. So I'm going to enter this right here. I'm going to click right there and I'll show you what, what happens here. That's where it's going to ramp on. Okay, well, let's go right here and change that again. Let's go right here. Let's say we want to enter right there. So now it's going to enter right there. Now it's going to exit whatever distance you set right here. So if I got rid of that, it's going to enter and exit at the exact same point. So me personally, I like doing a little bit of overlap. And then I like entering and exiting on smaller faces whenever possible because people are going to be looking at this part probably like this, right? So, I mean, you can, you can always enter where, wherever you want. Just, just pick a spot and roll with it, okay? And I'll tell you what, while we're here, let's change this to zero and see if it, see if it, yells at us nope didn't yell at us so they must have fixed that with an update yep perfect so let's run this on graphics and see what it looks like Now, I've had a lot of people ask me uh, the past few weeks, um, how does it pick the order that it does them, that, that it cuts? Uh, and, and somewhere in the algorithms inside of the software, it tries to select the most efficient way. Um, so that, that's all it's doing is it's trying to be the most efficient. So there's our chamfer. It looks like it crashed into material here, but we know that it didn't. You can really see that, that kind of flat right there. Okay. Looks like we are at a uh, three minute run time. So let's run all these together. See what the part would look like in reality. So it thinks it's a collision. I'm not going to go back and change everything. Wow, I must have set that really, really low. Okay, so you can see that is what it's going to look like 
after we run this fourth operation on here. Take this, we'll do a comparison. Hmm. So it's got my orientation screwed up. Run that one more time. That's probably why it's crashing because the orientation is weird. Comparison, man, it's still uh, still acting weird. Oh yeah, none of this stuff was uh, properly generated. So we should be good to watch it all now. Tell you what, that's gonna drive me nuts. I'm gonna have to go in here and change that peck amount. Now, wow, still weird, but you get the picture. I'm not going to get upset about that. You get the uh, you get the understanding. All right, so there's our trace, and that is our chamfer. So uh, engraving is really not a big deal. Um, you just have to have to get a sketch there, and then you use the trace strategy to drive around that that sketch all right and then uh putting a chamfer on there uh really really easy um and and hopefully when you run this part you'll see uh you'll see how neat those little features are all right um so again when we run this one we are looking um we're looking at a three minute run time two tools uh, an eighth inch ball mill um, available in the crib and the kind of standard tools so um, three flute um, eighth inch ball mill and then we've got a two flute quarter inch drill mill so a 45 degree end mill or 90 degree end mill however you want to call it All right so that's uh that's that so when you get done I want you to uh, save this model. It's going to be inspected by your instructor. Save that in your shared folder with your instructor. And then obviously want you to post-process this. And when you're post-processing, I've had a handful of people uh, turn in something that was posted, you know, to let's, let's just say a Hermely machine. All right. Uh, make sure that you are selecting the proper post-processor Haas pre-next-gen control. Okay. All right, now it looks like uh, something has gotten weird with mine. So I'm gonna go back through these. I'm gonna go no to the preload tool. I'm gonna go yes to the G187. No to sequence numbers. And I like to set this to about five tenths. Okay. And then simply post. And if you have any issues with that, just uh, let, let me or your instructor know and we'll, uh, we'll get you figured out. So that should be it. That should be, uh, should be it for your in shop part four. Remember to save it and uh, good luck.